Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be talking about how the new Toyota 4Runner has kind of been cancelled. Before we get into this video though, as always, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below, and then if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Let's get into it. So quick overview of the new 4Runner for those of you that haven't seen my other videos. Toyota is going to fully redesign the 4Runner for the 2024 or 2025 model year, or at least that's what we thought and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. But anyways, when it comes to the specs for this new 4Runner, it's still going to be body on frame just like the current 4Runner, solid rear axle, independent front suspension. It's going to have styling that is similar to the new Toyota Tundra on the exterior and then also with the interior as well. That's just what Toyota is doing with their larger body on frame vehicles from a stylistic perspective. Cause you know, they're trying to have, you know, kind of like a corporate style. And I don't think it's a bad thing because the new Tundra looks amazing. The new Sequoia uh, that also looks like the new Tundra also looks fantastic as well. And then it'll also share a lot of interior bits from both of those vehicles, again, from a stylistic perspective, but then also from a tech perspective. So like you'll have a full digital gauge cluster with the higher up packages on the new Forerunner, And then you have the larger, infotainment system as well and so just basically again take any package from the new tundra or the sequoia and then just kind of shrink it down for the forerunner and that's what it would look like inside and then the other big news with this new forerunner is it's going to come with two powertrains the first one is a turbocharged 2.4 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission and this powertrain is pretty solid if you look at it in uh, toyota and lexus's other vehicles it's just under 300 horsepower and over 300 pound feet of torque, which would make it better than the current powertrain that the foreigner has when it comes to horsepower and torque. Obviously, reliability, oh, that's definitely questionable, but power and torque a little bit better. And then the other powertrain is a hybrid version of that powertrain. It's the same powertrain that's in the new Toyota Crown. And so it basically has like mid 300s for the horsepower and torque. And then it's supposed to get slightly better fuel economy than just the 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder all by itself. And I might be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure uh, that one's paired to a six speed automatic. Let me know in the comment section below if I just got that uh, wrong. But anyways, that's the new specs on the new 4Runner that, well, we were supposed to get for the 2024 or 2025 five model year and that is now something that it looks like it's not going to happen. So if you look at Toyota sales over the last couple of years, they have declined at a pretty rapid rate. And this is not because they don't have demand for their product. They actually have a ton of demand for the product. Instead, the issue is with producing enough product. They have a bunch of supply issues they are currently experiencing, especially their Japanese factories. And I think you guys can kind of see where this is going. But before we dive into the whole Japanese factory issue, I quickly want to talk about the American factories because it seems like they're hit just like the Japanese factories factories, but not nearly as hard because availability with Toyota's belt in those American factories seems to just be way better. Like if you go look at my main channel, I've reviewed a bunch of, you know, Camrys for the 2023 model year, Sequoias, Tundras, so on and so forth, because overall availability is pretty good. Now, obviously, you know, most of those vehicles are sold out because everyone wants to buy a Toyota right now, but still like they're actually getting delivered to dealerships, which then allows me to obviously film them. Now the same can't be said for the vehicles built in the Japanese factories. If you again, go to the main channel, you'll notice that I haven't reviewed that many Lexuses this year. Every single Lexus is built in a Japanese factory. And then when it comes to Toyota models that are built in the Japanese factory, same thing. Like with the Forerunners, it is so hard for me to find Forerunners to review. And Toyota builds a million of them. And so they're just really struggling. And so this directly relates to the new Forerunner because, well, again, the current Forerunner is built in the Japanese factories and Toyota wants to build the new Forerunner in the Japanese factories as well. But it looks like that could potentially not happen. Now, there might be a fix and I'll talk about this fix a little bit later in the video, but what appears to be happening within Toyota's whole setup there is that they want to basically allocate more resources towards building Land Cruisers because they want to re-release the Land Cruiser in the US market. And right now they're sold out for like four years on the Land Cruiser, even more at this point. And so the only way that they're going to be able to ramp up production and build more so they can re-release it in another market is for them to take supply from other vehicles, AKA the Forerunner. And so this puts us in a pretty interesting situation where 
Toyota might ax the 4Runner, like the current generation, and just not have it for quite some time. And it'll be a little bit of time before the new version comes out. And so again, it's a pretty interesting predicament, but that's just the situation that we're in because of how constrained Toyota is right now with the whole supply situation. And this now leads us into Toyota's potential fix for this whole 4Runner situation, and that is giving the 4Runner a sombrero. <laughs> what I mean is by moving 4Runner production to the Mexico factory that currently produces the Toyota Tacoma. The new 4Runner is going to share a platform with the new Tacoma. They're going to share powertrains. They're basically going to be the same vehicle, just one's a midsize pickup truck and one is an SUV. And so building them in the same factory actually makes quite a bit of sense. However, this might be a little bit of an issue for Toyota when it comes to marketing. Now, don't get me wrong, people absolutely love the current generation Tacoma and people don't really complain about the build quality. Like that Mexico factory seems to do an amazing job. But people that are in the Toyota world are absolutely obsessed with Toyotas that are built out of the Japanese factory. That's what you hear time and time again. And so like when people talk about how much they love the current generation 4Runner, they also talk about how much they love the fact that it's built in the Japanese factories that just have amazing build quality and production methods, all that fun stuff. And so with Toyota adopting a completely new powertrain in the 4Runner that is substantially different than the current powertrain, again, going from a Nachi Aspirated V6 to a turbocharged four-cylinder and a turbocharged four-cylinder with a hybrid system at that, that's a big stretch. And then asking people to trust that this vehicle being built in a completely different factory is gonna be as good of a product as the prior one being built in the Japanese factories, that's also kind of a stretch. Now, I do think that people are ultimately still gonna buy the 4Runner if Toyota makes this move, because I mean, look at the new Tundra and Sequoia. They are selling amazingly well, and they're built at Toyota's Texas factory, and people always like to crap on that, but people are buying the product, and people seem to be loving it. And so, ultimately, I, I think that buyers will get past that. I think there will be a little bit of a hump from, you know, again, hardcore Toyota 4Runner fans. But eventually, you know, adoption will most likely happen. But let me know if you guys wouldn't buy a foreigner if it ultimately came out of that factory. So in summary, just like a lot of other automakers, Toyota is experiencing a lot of supply chain issues still. And we're probably going to be talking about this for the next couple of years just because of how backlogged everything has become. And because of these supply issues, Toyota is, you know, probably going to have to get creative if they want to continue to release new products product like the new 4Runner. And so one of two things is going to happen. Either the 4Runner is going to get delayed a massive amount and we're still going to get current generation 4Runners for the next few years, or Toyota is basically going to just ax the current generation 4Runner and we're just going to have a gap uh, for a while until this new 4Runner comes out, which I guess that would be good for people that have the current generation 4Runner because that means that values would go to the moon. Or Toyota is going to get rid of the current generation 4Runner and then quickly replace place it with the new generation 4Runner, but a 4Runner that is no longer built in Japan. It is instead built in Mexico. And so, you know, honestly, for me, this is just my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with me. I hope that they go for the last option because although, you know, don't get me wrong, I love the current generation 4Runner and I love the fact that it's built in the Japanese factories. We definitely need a new 4Runner. Like this vehicle is so dated. And this is coming from someone who owns a 4Runner. And I would rather have a new foreigner sooner rather than later. And frankly, I've reviewed a ton of Toyota Tacomas and I've lived with one for a week, a tier D pro. And I, I don't know, build quality seemed really nice. It seemed just as nice as the foreigners that are, that come out of the Japanese factory. And so like me being, you know, a current generation foreigner owner, I wouldn't have a problem with purchasing one out of that Mexico factory. But again, I'm interested to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this whole situation. What do you think Toyota should do with everything that they are experiencing? And I guess also, like on a side note, should Toyota, you know, focus production on the uh, Land Cruiser to bring it back to the U.S.? I think so. I think we should get like a Land Cruiser TRD Pro. I know that they've never done anything like that before, but I think that would sell really well. Anyways, that'll sum things up. I'll see ya.